Hello, Mr. Stevenson. My word, John. You look ravishing. <laughs> Why, thank you, sir. I do try. Speaking of which, are you here to try something new, perhaps? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Sir, that man, is he with you? Oh, God. Why, I, I, I've no idea where the place is, young man. I really must be going now. Goodbye. I, I don't know anything. Who's asking if you do? I, I don't know anything about any of this. I'm just here for a stroll, that's all. Why don't you just leave me alone? Get out of my sight. S sir It's your lucky day, boy. Consider yourself hired. Oh, thank you, sir. But I'm not looking to join with any ship now. I always get so seasick. You know what I'm talking about, and this'll pay better than the old perverts around here will. Sir, the gentleman was merely asking for directions. Yes, and I know where those directions would have led him. I'm hiring you to entertain a rich friend of mine. Sir, what you are talking about is a crime, and... 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 If I were the kind of person who would do what you're describing well, how would I know you aren't trying to set me up? I've never seen you around here before. Not that I am one of those people, mind you. Ever heard of Maria's brothel? You'll be putting on your little performance there. But pardon me, that establishment is ladies only. I mean, for ladies only. And today you'll be entertaining a very special customer there. I... I simply don't understand, sir. You'll get the details at Maria's. All you need to know is that you'll be getting four times as much as you'd be getting for turning tricks in this alleyway. It'll be safer, too. I... I... well, I... Are you telling the truth, sir? Come on. Hurry up and you won't be sorry. Here he is, Maria. Well, I can tell he's not a customer. All right. Step aside, Christopher. I'll take care of the rest. This calls for a woman's touch. He's a pretty boy, but making him into an attractive girl will require a few tricks. I'd rather not know. 
Just know I'm earning every coin in that pouch you brought. We'll have him ready soon. Just in time for Touche to show up. Feel free to wait. Just don't interrupt us. Look, Maria, I just wanted to have a drink, not explore some troubled whore's problems. Maybe this isn't the right time. Welcome, sir. It's an honor to see you again. Yes, yes. <clears throat> I assume everything is ready? It is, sir. In fact, I have a surprise for you that I think you will enjoy very much. A very unique one. Just for you. Oh, what kind of surprise? Something fit for those with certain tastes. Something you will only find here. Discreet as always, and more than worth your time. If you could just take a look, sir. The surprise is waiting in this room. I know you'll just love it. Really now? Well, let's see it then. Just follow me, sir. Welcome, sir. They call me Joan. I'm here for your entertainment. Oh, my, my, my. Uh, madam, this is too much. How did you... I knew you'd enjoy the surprise, sir. I shall leave you alone for now. Yes. Go about your business. You have truly outdone yourself today, mistress. I'm glad our surprise has met with your approval, sir. Thank you, madame. Thank you ever so much. I shall be returning far more often now. There. You owe me, Chris. So does your friend. Don't worry. You'll get yours. Just make sure this thing happens. It will. It's me, sir. It's John. I don't even want to know. And who might you be? Do I know you? You don't, but I know you. And I know the boy you just... spent some time with. What? Oh, you? How? How dare you accuse me of such things? Roger, Roger, remove this ruffian from my sight. Get your grubby mitts off the master, you lowlife, or I'll... Oh, God! Help! Help! You really want to call for the guard? You know what happens to buggerers, Mr. Touche? You? You have no proof. No proof of those... those filthy lies. I have the boy. A, a filthy street urchin? Who would believe a lowlife like him? A, a pair of lowlifes? <laughs> Enough people will, Mr. Touche. You need to be smart about this. Even the rumors alone would be bad for your reputation. Don't you agree? A man of the church, a uh, disgusting, lecherous buggering. All right. In God's name, what... What do you want? Why are you doing this? Relax. I'm not here to out you. In fact, I'm here to help you make a new friend. He can make all of this go away. You just need to talk to him. What? Who is that man? 
Did this new friend of mine arrange all this? Watch your mouth and remember who you're talking to. Read this. God in heaven! Avery! This is his doing! You're a smart man. For a pervert. Now shut up and go do what he told you to. This isn't just about that foolish war between him and Kensington, is it? Is this his attempt to get close to the patriarchs? How does he expect me to help? Am I to be a pawn in this insane obsession of his? Just go talk to the man. Wait a moment. You've no idea what I mean, do you? He sent you here, but you don't even know why, do you? What about it? The Patriarchs! That's what this is about. About Avery wanting to take Kensington's place among them. Who the hell are the Patriarchs? You don't know? <sighs> well, you wouldn't. That's the measure of their power, that only those at the top know of them. Of course, most of them are the top. Okay. It's a group of rich men, so what? A group of rich guys? Ha! Huh. That's like saying there's some water in the ocean. These men make the rich look like beggars. They have their fingers in every pie in the West Indies. They're only a small group of men, but they own half of these islands. They have the ears of the judges, the governors, even the royal court. So you've got to be rich to become a patriarch. What's the point then? <sighs> What's the point of having a ship full of gold when you already have a room full of it? Becoming a patriarch is... It's just more than anything you imagine. It's like being a mere merchant one day and then being crowned king. There's nothing these men are not able to accomplish in the Caribbean when they're together. Nothing. That's why Kensington and Avery hate each other? No. They've been at each other's throats for a long time. They've hated each other for years. Kensington was in financial trouble at some point, and Avery moved in. He bought some properties of Kensington's, and it looked like he was about to become a truly influential man. But then, somehow, Kensington bounced back and overtook Avery again. How did Kensington become a patriarch and Avery didn't? Avery seems pretty damn rich. They were both rich. The patriarchs had been watching them for some time. Rumor has it that Kensington sucked up to one of them, was invited, and voted in before Avery. Then he started blocking Avery's access to them. How? With the patriarchs, everything has to be decided by a unanimous vote, or it doesn't happen. You can imagine that with Kensington in there, there would always be at least one vote that Avery could never get, and that's all it takes. He's been trying to undermine Avery ever since. Then these patriarchs are at war with Avery. No, no, they're neutral for the most part. But of course they support Kensington as one of their own. Supposedly, Kensington wanted Avery dealt with, but that's not the patriarch way. Extreme measures are only taken in dire situations. The Patriarchs thrive on secrecy, and assassinations draw attention. And Avery didn't think to try that strategy? The same goes for him. The Patriarchs are... well, they're a different breed of men. If they found Avery to be in improper standing, he'd never get a chance to join. Even without Kensington blocking him. Avery can't afford to strike at Kensington, either. So Avery and Kensington are trying to cut each other down quietly. In a way, Kensington has the greater advantage. Avery is a very powerful man, but the Patriarch's floor is his ceiling. The Patriarchs might not be against him, but Kensington is. They would have probably accepted him by now, if it weren't for Kensington. He is the only thing standing in Avery's way, but Avery can't hit him openly, 
or they'll lock him out forever. But they've both survived so far. I even thought that Avery had finally given up. <sighs> I should have known better. He's been scheming the whole time. Typical. The man is a snake in the grass. You seem to know a hell of a lot about these things. <laughs> Do you think the man I work for is just a governor? You think he would have become one without the support of a few friends? Like a round table of friends who vote. And you don't care about me knowing all this? If you can keep this small, <clears throat> vice of mine quiet, I don't mind anything. I can afford this to come out. It's hardly the kind of thing I could have swept under the rug. I'm not a patriarch. So what does this have to do with Avery and Kensington? Kensington has been one of them for several years. Avery is desperate to join their ranks. They could vote him in, but Kensington would never allow that. Vote him in? That's what they do. One must be noticed, invited, and then voted in. And it takes quite a lot just for them to notice you, believe me. All right. Just go talk to Avery, and this will all go away. I will, but the man is playing a dangerous game. His obsession with becoming a patriarch will cost him one day. Guess you need
Guess you need followed again. Actually, it's your demeanor, Christopher. In his infinite generosity, God has given me a future, and the ability to know what men are saying without words is one that I value most highly. Good for you. Do you need me to tell you what happened, or did God already fill you in? I surmise that Mr. Touche will be paying me a visit shortly. As to other details, I would expect you to tell me anything pertinent. That arrangement better start going both ways. I don't like being kept in the dark, Avery. Christopher, I have already told you. There are many events falling into place in many different ways. You need only worry yourself with the tasks I assign you. Leave the finer details to me. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your little scheme to get in close with the patriarchs. <laughs> that Mr. Touche. He does talk, doesn't he? Enough for me to know that this isn't just a small detail. Do you really think you could keep this a secret from me? But Christopher, that's the whole point. You were going to find out within two more steps of our plan. There is a part of it that will require your knowledge of their existence. You were simply going to find out about it later. Once I was in too deep to walk away. Christopher, you truly are much more than a run-of-the-mill pirate. I knew I would do well to hire you. Hire me? You didn't hire me. I'm working with you, and let me make this clear. I don't give a damn about your rich man's games, your pompous patriarch bullshit, or this feud with Kensington. But I don't like being kept in the dark. It makes me angry. Fair enough, Christopher. As I said, you would have found out soon anyway. But I understand your concern. There are no more surprises planned. You have my solemn promise. Right. So what now? Now I shall await Mr. Touche's arrival. Meanwhile, you can proceed to the next part of the plan. So without the Patriarchs, Kensington is dead in the water. Let's say that, were to happen now, he would be a powerless blowhard, little more than a dubious tradesman. Remember the three trees? The Patriarch's influence is vital to each of them. Kensington's presence among the Patriarchs and his good standing with them is what keeps his trees standing. The point of all this is to strip him of the Patriarch's support. And by the time that happens, he will have been stripped of a great many other things. How long has Kensington been with the Patriarchs? Oh, several years now. What matters is that he never should have been voted in in the first place. There are probably more perks to being a Patriarch than just getting a fancy name. Let me put this in sailor's terms, Christopher. 
Imagine that your ship could suddenly reach any point in the world in an instant, as if by magic. This is but one analogy to the kind of power the patriarchs possess. Sounds worth the trouble. More than worth it, Christopher. These patriarchs, should I be expecting a war against them? Heavens, no. The patriarchs do not form any simple attachments to people or things. Do not expect them to fight for Kensington once he's no longer of any use to them. They are men of the mind, men of business. They observe and calculate. Incidentally, that's another reason why Kensington has never belonged among their numbers. So how did you get in? He managed to curry favor with a high-ranking patriarch who is now deceased in his typical underhanded and ungodly manner. This misguided patriarch supported his candidacy. His age combined with Kensington's evil wiles simply clouded his judgment. So, how do you become a patriarch? One must be a man of high standing, a man of great influence, a patriarch. And have their unanimous support? Indeed. And but for one pus-filled boil, I would have had that long ago. Are any of the other patriarchs your enemy? No, Christopher. Some are still Kensington's close allies. But that is a different matter altogether, and it will soon change. One more thing. Marie expects a little help for the part she played in your little scheme. I told her you'd get the church to leave her to run her business without any more interference. I expect you to have it done. You promised something to that fallen woman, and you expect me to help her, to have pity on a succubus incarnate. I'm not one to read the Bible, but didn't Jesus forgive the whores? Fair point, Christopher, and an astute observation. Yes, yes, that is the duty of a Christian, isn't it? To forgive, to comfort, to love one's neighbors oneself. I believe this may prove rather enjoyable, actually, to bring out the remaining good, even in the soul of a fallen woman. Ha <laughs> ha! Christopher, you continue to surprise me. I shall bring this up with my friend the bishop. Your Magdalen will be rewarded for her assistance. Just who are they? Are the patriarchs, I mean. In the simplest of terms, a group of men with considerable influence who have banded together so that their power might be increased exponentially. And in less simple terms? God has given a shepherd to every flock. Some shepherds lead one flock, others more. Some shepherds can lead a hundred flocks across a hundred islands. So it's a group of rich men who formed a little club to get things done, and you want to join them. That's what you're trying to say? Ah, oh, Christopher, you might as well describe the finest Grand Cru as a drink. So what do we do next? A fine day, Christopher, made even better by a delivery I received today. Crates and crates of the finest produce available. It's already at my plantation. I prefer to move everything from the docks as soon as possible, lest it spoils in the sun. Salt can help with that. I know that. Do you think Kensington does? A shipload of his spices and sugar is due to sail to London tomorrow. Sugar and spices don't spoil. What's your point? But food does, in general. And most people think in simple terms, wouldn't you agree, Christopher? In their minds, spices are simply another kind of food. Food that could go bad just from sitting out. Or in this case, with a little help. 
I'm not following you. Speaking of help, I'm told my kitchen staff have been having problems with rats in the cellar recently. They use poison on the critters, the same kind they use on ships, odorless and supposedly tasteless, though I'm not sure what unfortunate soul was forced to come to that conclusion. Oh, and there's still plenty of that poison left, I hear. You have a ship, so you're welcome to collect as much of it as you might need, and use it anywhere you find it's needed. Ah, uh, I think I get your meaning. I'm sure you are, Christopher. And your thoughts? Sounds like Kensington is about to have some problems with his supplies. And should that happen, how could he ever look the people of London in the eyes again? For that matter, how many Londoners would ever look at anything shipped from his plantation, I wonder? Bonjour. Ça passe? Uh, I need the powder you used to deal with your rat problem. Ah, sans doute. En dedans cuisine. Never mind. Journal.
The sea won't have us today, boys. Aye, aye, Captain. it and fight! The gold and the wages! Aye, aye, Captain. Keep your wits about you, men.
Hey. Yes, you need You leaving soon? You don't want to miss Morel. I'll leave when I'm ready to leave. Of course. Of course, mi amigo.
guess you need... Guess you need your boat repaired. 